Hey everybody, William B. Brown coming at you. Uh, we did the liquiculture prep in the last video. In this video, I'm going to show you what we do after we run through the pressure cooker or sterilizer. So it was in the All-American Electric Sterilizer there uh, for 30 minutes at 10 PSI. Um, and again, I, I'll repeat from the previous video, I do that to make sure that the uh, sugars in the liquiculture do not caramelize. Um, I also run my agar at the same uh, pressure at the same amount of time. So I have a old some old agar here that I didn't use it up last time, so I did that again and I made some new agar to fill up all the future dishes that I need to do this time. Um, so as far as you're working with agar, um, you're going to want to let your agar cool down to about 120 degrees. If you have a laser thermometer, that works really well, um, but at 120 degrees, if you start pouring it, um, it won't leave so much condensation on the lid of your petri dish. Um, also, it won't solidify it for a little bit longer, so you have a nice amount of time to start working with it. Uh, for the liquid cultures, Whenever, before I uh, introduce any culture into the liquid culture uh, jars, I want to make sure that it's not going to burn my hand. Like if it's if it's warm but it's not hurt, like uncomfortably warm, uh, you should be good to start adding your culture in there. Um, if it burns your hand when you touch it, that means that it might kill your mycelium when you put mycelium in there. So I have it sitting in front of the flow hood here, clean air being blown on it, but the air is also helping to cool it down. So. Um, I'll get back to you guys in about 15 minutes whenever I'm going to be adding the cultures into these uh, liquid culture jars here. Hey everybody, William Video Brown coming back at you. And now we have our liquid cultures that have cooled down and I have poured the agar into the plates here. Um, so what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to transfer some of these new cordyceps cultures into the liquid culture and then also onto another plate. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get started with that here. I'm going to be utilizing this back disintegrator that I got on eBay. Uh, super cheap. Um, you can get a back disintegrator is used for uh, not that expensive at all. Um, so I spray a little bit of alcohol on the blade handle. I'm going to let that uh, evaporate off a little bit before I stick it into the back disintegrator so I don't cause any flames. Um, before the video started, I sprayed both of these culture plates with alcohol because they came from somebody else. Um, so I'm going to open those up and we're going to take a fresh petri dish that hasn't been used yet and I'm going to open up one of these jars. Because I've never tested these strains before, I'm going to go ahead and put them in small jars uh, in case they're not that great. I don't want to have a large batch of it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and open that up just a little bit. Make sure that's easily just ready to open. Heat that up one more time. And I'm going to dip it into this agar, this clean agar to cool down the blade make sure I don't burn the mycelium. I'm going to go into here. I'm going to cut some slices, I'm going to cut some crosses, get it all nice and sliced and diced, and then I'm going to take these little pieces and I'm just going to chunk them right in to the liquid culture jar. Put that uh, squeeze back in the sterilizer and then just do it all over again. Um, so now that these are in here, I'm going to switch them around every day. I'm going to keep that in a nice, cool, dark place and I'm going to swish it around uh, every day until I start to see some mycelium growing in there. So last and final step, and then I'm just going to be repeating this process, is uh, heat, this is heated up again. I'm going to go ahead and cool it down. You can hear it sizzle. And I'm going to take out a piece of this culture. That uh, piece doesn't want to work with me there. This agar is weird. There we go. Got a piece of this culture here. I'm going to stick it right into my new agar plate. And I'm just going to wrap it up. Wrap it before you tap it. And uh, just put some uh, parafilm wax tape around the edges. Make sure nothing gets in there. And I'm going to label it. Some people do P1, some people do G, whatever works for you. Um, but I'm going to label this, I'm going to label today's date, and I'm going to put G2, because uh, that's what makes sense to me. And um, before I leave you guys here, I'm going to do the same on this liquid culture. I'm going to label it the date. Um, but before I uh, leave you guys here, I'm going to show you one other way that you can do liquid culture. So this is what I recommend people do uh, if they buy a new liquid culture, is to go ahead and... Um, Take the liquid culture that you got in the mail, 
sterilize a whole new jar. Sterilize the tip of your needle. Make sure you spray down the syringe port, and then just stick some of that lipid culture and shoot it in there. And um, that's one of the easiest ways to start a lipid culture. Um, if anybody doesn't have a HEPA filter, if anybody's new to working with uh, mushrooms, new to lab skills, or anything like that, I totally recommend buying a lipid culture, putting it into a lipid culture versus working with agar, because there's less potential for contamination. So you see, when I'm working with this agar, I had to open this plate to transfer it into this. I also had to open the lipid culture. That's potential for contamination. Um, and then I have to open it multiple times to transfer. Um, versus this liquid culture, the only point of contact is the end of the needle tip, which gets sterilized and heated up, and it stays hot until you insert it in there, and uh, the liquid actually cools it down as it comes through. So there's not really any potential of contamination when you're working with liquid cultures. And then again, you're gonna draw this right out, and then insert it into a jar. So there's never really any time of open uh, potential contamination. So lip cultures are the best for beginners. I highly recommend it. Um, and yeah, thanks for tuning in. This is William D. Brown coming at you with Michael Symbio teaching you how to work with liquid cultures. If you guys have any other requests for more videos, drop it in the comments below. Hit the thumbs up, turn on push notifications. As always, propagate and mycelium. Right, guys, so I do get a lot of questions about spore syringes, and when you get spore syringes, you're going to want to do the same thing. Um, you're going to want to take your syringe and introduce it into a liquid culture. That's going to be your safest, best bet. Um, but one thing um, that I, I a lot, all right, so a lot of people will buy my my liquid cultures. A lot of people will buy any liquid cultures, and they'll take the liquid and put it right in. Sitting water on top of the petri dish can encourage bacteria. So even with your spore syringe, even with the liquid culture, I wouldn't recommend putting it right onto a petri dish. If you want to put it on a petri dish, I would recommend. Uh, inoculating a jar of grains, once the grains are colonized, then break that up and put a piece of the grain onto a petri dish. Um, that's just how I would go about it. So sports syringes are going to want to go about the same way that you would go with the liquid culture. Um, and yeah, I hope that answers anybody's questions.